Hello dear students. Welcome to another edition of some basic concepts in organic chemistry. The topic for today is free radical addition reactions. Addition that means when you add something across a bond is what we call as an addition reaction. So if you notice over here what we are going to do is CH3, CH double bond, CH2. It's an unsaturated compound. Across the double bonds, we shall be adding a simple molecule, hydrogen bromide. So HBr. Hydrogen can add across to CH or to CH2. Bromine takes the other carbon. Depending upon where the hydrogen goes, we can have two types of products over here. CH3, CH2, CH2Br or we can have CH3, CHBr, CH3. That's a primary bromopropane, primary compound, whereas this is a secondary. The carbon to which bromine is attached is attached to two other carbon atoms. Experimentally, it has been observed that our primary is the major product, whereas the secondary product is minor. That means it is formed in a smaller amount. And it has been observed that this happens specifically when you are using a peroxide during the course of the reaction. So what does the peroxide do? Because if you don't use the peroxide, the situation immediately gets reversed. So you will have this as the minor product and our secondary will be the major product. How do we explain this behavior? We know that in the presence of peroxides, homolysis happens. That means the bond breaks equally. The bond breaks in such a way that the shared pair of electron is taken equally by both the atoms. So which we shall represent by a fish hook arrow indicating that the pair of electrons gets transferred singly. It is not the pair which moves. It is each of the atoms gets a single unpaired electron. If it was the movement of a pair of electrons, we would represent it by this kind of an arrow, that is a full headed arrow. So in order to explain, now since we are talking about a homolytic fission, we shall be discussing this reaction mechanism in three steps. Whenever it's homolysis and involving free radicals, Always remember initiation, propagation, termination. Three steps. Initiation means when a free radical is formed. Propagation is that free radical now goes rampant and goes and starts attacking other stable molecules in order to get stable because it's something which has got an unpaired electron. It's very restless. It wants company. So it goes and keeps on attacking other molecules. With the result, there will be more free radicals generated because itself it will get stabilized, but it will make the other molecule unstable. Termination. When two disturbed people will come together or when two unstable free radicals will come together, they will give us a stable structure to bring an end to that chain. Initiation in this step happens by the use of peroxide. The peroxide molecule has this kind of a bond in it. So the peroxide molecule breaks homolytically either because of the heat or the light to give us the uh, free radical RO dot. Now here uh, we are using a generalized usually we'll uh, take benzoyl peroxide during the course of this reaction. So C6H5CO dot is what is formed over here. This react goes and attacks HBr to form an alcohol and a bromide free radical. That means homolysis is happening here as well. Now this bromide free radical is highly reactive. It causes the pi electron cloud of CH double bond CH2 to shift in such a manner that each of the carbon gets the unpaired electron. Now bromide has a choice. 
I go and attack this CH or I go and attack the CH2 group. Let's say we talk about both the possibilities. We draw the structure for both of them. So bromide radical attacks the second carbon atom. Bromide radical attacks the first carbon atom. With the result, the other carbon which is left will have an unpaired electron. In other words, now this becomes a free radical. Carbon which has the unpaired electron is attached to only one other carbon directly. It's a primary free radical. Carbon which has the unpaired electron is attached to two other carbon atoms. It's a secondary free radical. Try and recall your learning earlier regarding the stability of free radicals. We know that tertiary free radicals are more stable than secondary, which in turn are more stable than primary due to hyperconjugative effect. So out of the two, which will be present in a bigger amount, secondary or primary? Yes, a secondary is the major uh, intermediate over here. Although the other intermediate is also formed, it's not that the primary free radical is not formed. But majority will be the secondary form. Now again we take two possibilities. Here we are talking about the uh, secondary, the primary free radical undergoing attack with HBr, generating a bromide free radical and in the process it is taking up the hydrogen from hydrogen bromide to give us to bromopropane. The other possibility again the secondary free radical undergoing attack undergoing reaction with HBr to give us bromopropane. But because our secondary free radical was more stable we will get the bromopropane as the major product in this reaction. Recall Markovnikov rule. Markovnikov rule said that whenever an unsymmetrical alkene adds to an unsymmetrical reagent, the positive part goes to the carbon bearing more number of hydrogen atoms. That means according to Markovnikov rule, the hydrogen should go here, the bromide should go there the, to the second carbon atom. In other words, I should have two bromopropane as the major product. But our experimental observation is totally opposite. That is why this is displaying, this is going against the Markovnikov rule, hence called anti-Markovnikov behavior. This type of an effect, because taking place in the presence of a peroxide, is also called as the crash peroxide effect. In this particular reaction, both the propagation steps are actually exothermic. Exothermic means loss of energy is taking place. Loss of energy means greater stability. This supports the reaction and the reaction with HBr can go forward. What if I replace HBr with any of the other hydrogen halides? HF, HCl, HI. In the case of HF and HCl, the bond between hydrogen and the halogen is very strong. So with HF, the reaction does not happen. It will proceed normally. With HCl, what happens is the second step of the propagation reaction becomes endothermic. So endothermic means it does not result in release of energy. So the reaction actually slows down. In which case, it is our Markovnikov rule which gets followed. In the case of HI, again, here the bond is very weak. But at the same time, what happens is because of the peroxide, the hydrogen iodide can get converted to iodine, one. And secondly, what will happen is the first process or the first step of propagation itself becomes very, very slow because of its weakness. How does this propagation reaction stop? They are hitting each other, they are forming, they are taking away, they are fighting with each other. Okay, I want the electron, I want the electron. Somewhere this has to come to an end. That step is called termination. And that usually happens 
when two lonely people will come together. So we have bromide free radical colliding with another bromide free radical to give us a bromine molecule or one free radical combining with Br. So we'll have the uh, one two dibromo product being formed during the course of this reaction. Now these kind of how do we know that this is happening is because these kind of byproducts have been extracted from the reaction mixture. So when HBr is added to any alkene without the peroxide, it's going to follow simple Markovnikov rule. But if it is being added in the presence of the peroxide, it goes completely opposite and it behaves in an anti-Markovnikov manner. That means the positive part will go to the carbon bearing more number of hydrogen atoms. I hope this clears the concept of free radical mechanism. Continue watching more videos. All the best.